So here he is um, with the panels off and I thought first things first um, let's have a good visual inspection to um, see how big a problem we have to deal with here. Um, I'm not sure that I'll be able to fix this up. Um, it's a uh, it's, I haven't worked on discrete solid state stuff probably since the early 80s, like 82 or something. So, uh, we'll see how this goes. Anyway, first things first, let's have a good look around. Um, so I guess my first sort of comment is it's pretty well designed in terms of being able to service it. Um, yeah, I'll show you that we go through. Uh, so, first things first, um, the mains socket is a very unusual one and the mains cable for it got lost somewhere during a house move so I have to tack in the temporary mains cable uh, until I get a suitable replacement for this that's more uh, like a current standard uh, device but uh, I'd say I'm a long way from plugging this in. I did plug it in just to verify that the fault is the same as before and it is um, and nothing else seemed to go bang but having had a bit of an inspection of it I don't think I'll be plugging it in for a little while yet um, so if I sort of move around um, so obviously the big mains transformer right here with gazillions of different voltage taps and settings so this thing is pretty universal in terms of what sort of main supply you give it um, so just visually walking around, uh, the first thing that, that comes to mind is um, <clears throat> this power transistor here has clearly been uh, replaced at some point or re-soldered because the solder job is not exactly what you'd call a professional. Um, and so that's, um, there are lots and lots of repairs done to this over time, so we'll walk our way through. Um, Okay, so each of these boards um, hinges on the bottom, a little screw on the top. So uh, let's see if I can do this uh, while holding the camera. Okay, um, so if we look around first, there's clearly burn signs here, um, and there's burn signs here. Um, and the soldering generally is not brilliant. Um, so if I tip this guy down, you can see that all the wires go off the edge, or predominantly off the edge. So it, as I say, it's pretty neat in terms of uh, servicing. So um, what do we learn here? So we can see these diodes here have been replaced at the very least. So you can see here that there is signs of burning on these resistors and these have not been replaced. So these are to be checked. Um, don't think I'd be leaving those like that. Um, yeah, this is, looks messy. Um, most of these diodes I would imagine are replaced or somebody was just tacking wires on to do testing or something. Um, but judging by the burns, I'd say those diodes were replaced. Um, so I guess that's kind of it for this particular board. Um, so let's have a look at the next one. So Okay, um, again these diodes here look to have been replaced, um, evidence of burn on the board itself um, and the diodes all sit up proud, they don't sit down on the board so again we'll assume that's a previous repair. Um, I think that's really all I've seen here. Um, let me just have a Yep, the rest looks reasonable enough. Again, lots of electrolytics, so I guess they're all candidates um, for replacement at some point. 
Um, okay, working our way around. Then we start to see some of the big electrolytics from the power supply. And oh, I guess you can see the, um, I don't know if you can see this, but it's bubbled up here. And uh, that's obviously a cause for concern where it's starting to come through there. Um, the center one look doesn't look to have anything bulging out of it. Looks like it has some sort of a relief valve thing here in case it did. Uh, but this guy right here has got exactly the same problem as his brother on the other side. Um, so I guess we're gonna have to get that replaced as well before we do anything else. Um, okay so we keep going around um, okay I can immediately see signs of previous work here uh, and in fact some of this um, tracks are actually lifted off the board but there doesn't seem to be any burn marks so it might have been just really bad soldering stuff um, again things like this don't look brilliant um, Underneath the rest of it doesn't look too bad But again, you can see there's been soldering here. It was never cleaned up afterwards um, So yes, let's have a look on the other side Okay Nothing immediately uh, panicky um, again electrolytics to be considered later um, I'm not sure if when I come across a resistor like this or like this or like this which is very different from these I, I presume these guys are all much tighter tolerance resistors um, so I don't know there doesn't look to be any um, sort of damage related to these, so maybe they're not, you know, important enough to be um, close tolerance. Okay, so that one is probably less of a worry. Um, although clearly where the uh, solder work has been done here, um, that means this transistor right here has been replaced. And in fact, you can see it wobbles like crazy. It's, um, yeah, it's not properly, uh, it's not what you'd call a reliable fix, so we'll have to look at that. Okay, well, uh, <coughs> you start to get the <coughs> feeling that uh, there's quite a lot to do here. Um, this is the HT, and as I said last time I switched it on, we certainly had HT. Um, no problem, I mean the beam is there. Um, again, there's some evidence of previous soldering. Doesn't look too bad though. <clears throat> okay, this is evidence of uh, making up resistor values with, you can see there's two in parallel and one in series to get whatever that value is. And here we have two in series to get whatever this value is, so we have to go check that out. Fuse, which is not blown, although clearly the contacts are very badly corroded here. For the rest, it looks reasonably okay, so we may not have a lot to do HD-wise. Um, so that really completes, I guess, our first pass at the lower section, which is various power supply pieces, and the HT section. <clears throat> Excuse the voice, just getting over the flu. <clears throat> so it does tend to break up every now and then. So for the rest, we have a similar type of construction here, where you have larger circuit boards, but they're, they're hinged at one end and screwed at the other, so you can tip them out. There is some basic 7400 type early series um, ICs, but the bulk of it is really discrete transistors and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, um, 
Yes, if I look around these, there doesn't seem to be, fortunately, uh, any immediate causes for alarm. Um, so, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, it, if you like, let me just orientate. So these two whole modules, the lower half, which is all the channels, and the time base, they actually all plug into the rest of the scope through an edge connector here. So this whole thing is, is a big module which I can remove uh, to work on, uh, which is good, so I'll remove that in a moment. Um, but again, on quick observation, um, <clears throat> again, I notice some signs of burning on resistors right here. Um, but this is in the channel amplifier section, so um, not too worried about that at the moment. But it's interesting how you have this really good design with hinging out boards and all the wires going off the end. Uh, <coughs> and then you suddenly come to something like this, where the board looks lovely on here, but we don't have any hinges anymore here. And then when you turn it round, you have this, <coughs> which is basically <laughs> quite a nightmare uh, because just you have wires and components coming straight off every different part of the board. Um, so yeah, that's going to be fun. Let's hope we don't have to spend too much time in there. Um, and then as I say, the CRT itself, I didn't see any signs of uh, burning, damage, or anything like that. So hopefully I'm not going to have too much problems on the, on the HT side of things. And the, uh, the CRT, the tube itself, is a Telefunken device from Germany, from West Germany. So, <clears throat> that's kind of a quick sweep at the uh, first pass at this thing. Um, as I say, a long way to go. <clears throat> I do have the manual, the original manual. It took a long time, that's why this scope has been sitting around for years. It just took forever to actually find the manual and I thought I'd have no chance of doing this without one. <clears throat> anyway, the first thing I... I just always assumed that this scope was like a US device. And when I went searching for SE Labs, they have a site. Their only sites are in the U.S. They they don't make any reference to um, <coughs> presence outside of the United States. However, when I got this manual, it talks about SE Laboratories Engineering Limited in Feltham in Middlesex in the U.K. Um, and a member of the EMI group of companies. So... I guess they're not around anymore. I'm often curious as to how companies evolve. So we'll see. Uh, and I got it and I got the manual from these people here, right here. Um, it is very comprehensive. Um, so yeah. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is get really familiar with all this sort of circuitry um, on the diagram so I know where all, everything is and all the values. Certainly want to look at replacing this guy and his brother um, and maybe anything else that looks immediately obvious. Um, go through any of the uh, dodgy track work uh, and dodgy solder work. Um, redo this dodgy tr power transistor here. Um, Etc. It's et all the obvious stuff <clears throat> before I <clears throat> get to the point where I want to power this thing up for the first time. So there you go. I'm in the land of I think what some people call the three-legged beasties, i.e. these transistors. So there's no tubes or valves here apart from the CRT. Um, so a slight digression into the world of solid state uh, before getting back into uh, the proper world of thermionic valves. Uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys again soon.